in communities across this country, whether it's Baltimore, Ferguson, or Atlanta. I believe people are inherently good. I truly believe and have come to learn that we have more similarities than differences. I believe that we have compassion towards each other, whether your color, your, where you're from, or even your sexual orientation. We can begin to build long-lasting relationships, but most of all, build trust. I am Chanel Shakur, owner of Nonstop Barbershop. I actually got into cutting hair from my dad. My dad would cut, my brothers and myself would cut our hair, and we always had tools around the house. So I was always intrigued in terms of cutting hair. My older brothers could do it, but I was a little too young to do it. But I didn't only see it as a way of my father saving money. I looked at it more of a, an artistic expression. When I would go to different barber shops and I would see people get into the chair and actually be transformed for I would see people get in the chair and come out and look like a totally different person. It was amazing to me. And it, it just caught my total attention. And from there, I began to study the craft, uh, began to get tools of myself, I began cutting friends, and it, it transformed pretty much into a business. It became a small business in my mother's basement into cutting on college campus and then forming my own business where now I give opportunities to other people to do exactly the same thing that I did. You know, my wife, she played a very intricate part in the making of Now Stop Barbershop. She was the one that actually told me that I can do this a year before I plan to do it. Another thing she did was she actually came up with the name Now Style Barbershop. Um, I was going to name something different, but she came up with Now Style. I just said, hey, you know, use your name. Use part of your name. So I went with it and it actually worked. Um, what was very profound about what we uh, did um, uh, as a union was very humble in the beginning. What we did was we would print out flyers and we lived in an apartment complex and we would get up in the morning, five in the morning, and we would go actually flood the whole apartment complex with flyers. We put them in cars, we would put them in mailboxes, we would put them in doors, we would put them everywhere. I would go home and change and I would come back to the barbershop and see what kind of coupons would come in from our work. And we would do this every Saturday morning, five o'clock in the morning. Consistent, religiously, without fail. This is just what we did. Another thing that uh, I believe makes my style special in my eyes is that the way things were lined up moving forward and actually acquiring this property, we, myself and my wife, we bought a house a year before. Now style came into fruition. And we were actually looking around to actually rent a, rent a space. But when we bought our house, what happened was the realtors were actually impressed with her, so they offered her a job. So now she's working into a, in a real estate office. So she would look on the computer and look at places and we would go and see them. But then she came across this place that didn't have any signs on the windows. We had to be actually be a realtor to actually go in and actually see what's, what's listed. And we found this place, we came, we met with the man, and we just knew that we bought a house a year before. We knew we were going to be able to afford because he wanted to sell. He was ready to retire. And we did the necessary paperwork. And we were actually able, with the blessings of God, to actually acquire this property. But what was very special about it is that behind that wall right there are stairs. And those stairs actually lead up to nothing. To the ceiling. So on this side of the block, this is the only building with one story. And I truly believe that if this building had two stories, I wouldn't have been able to afford it. So I truly believe that this place was destined for me. And things just lined up and 
And it's just a blessing that I was able to pay attention to what was going on. And having someone by my side to actually push and guide and, and, and just give really good counsel. Now Style Barbershop actually came into existence in June of 1998. So it's been 18 years uh, Now Style has been in existence. But the thing is, Now Style has actually been in existence longer than that because it was actually a vision within my mind. When I was cutting hair at the barbershop in Real Road, just Harris Afro, like, I would visualize what Now Style would look like, what Now Style would smell like, how many chairs Now Style would have, what music would we play, what type of language, what type of community would be created, what would come out of the barbershop. All of these things was happening two to three years before Now Style actually opened its doors. But to answer your question, 18 years in doing business. I believe the key to having your business run like a well oiled machine Keep your vision in the front part of your brain. Don't let anyone distract you from your vision. Don't let anyone distract you from the goal, the goals of the establishment. I believe what happens in, in, in business is that we do get distracted and we want to conform to maybe our guests or our clientele or look like the community outside. And so having it run like a well-oiled machine is taking care of the people who are in your charge. When we did the remodel here, which we did about maybe four remodels over the past 18 years, every time I make a decision or we do a remodel, I always think about them first. For example, when we got new chairs, what I did was I started from the back. My chair is the first chair when you walk in the door. I started from the back, and each month I got a chair, some months I got two, all the way up until I was the last one. So when you provide that example that you're taking care of them and not so much of yourself and taking everything out of the business and looking out for yourself first, that builds trust, that builds commitment to them, and they, in turn, want to do more for you and the business actually runs because they feel ownership in it. You know, when you think about business, it's not just you. You know, it's the people who collaborate, who come to work, who drive the distance, who put up with the things that you put up with as well in the business that make you successful. One of those people who have been with me the longest his name's Kennard Perry. In one word, he, he, he's amazing. He's, he's colorful, he's a caricature, he's charismatic. I mean, I could just go on and on. But one thing that I can say about him is his work ethic is like nothing I've ever seen in this business. And I've come across so many barbers. I've worked with, oh, i worked with many of many barbers. I've never seen anyone with fortitude, resilience that this guy has. Um, I mean, for example, he drives uh, on average just to come here each day, at least an hour, to and fro. He's the first one here, and most times the last one. I mean, what can I say? I mean, this is what. Uh, the prior's dream. And we go back to Morgan State University today. And he's been a friend of mine for a long time. Morgan State of Law, a political science major, and he uses it every day behind that chair. He's one of the most successful guys that I've had, that had me, had here, and have been here the longest. Um, I think one of the other people that I like to point out. She's a female, and she brings the softness to the shop. She's, she's my rock star. I mean, what can I say? Miss Latoya Key. Um, she, she cuts right next to me. I like to keep her close. Uh, 
she, she, she takes care of me. You know, uh, she calls me Mr. Now, <laughs> which I think is funny, but it's sweet. And um, her attention to detail is spectacular. I mean, her attention to detail is stellar. I remember the first day she came, she stood right at the door. I was cutting. She opened up the door and didn't even step in and said, excuse me, um, do you guys need any help? I looked at her and I, I, I kind of laughed to myself. And I, I looked and I was like, wow, this is a female. And um, I said, come on in. So she came in, she told me her story, um, some of her goals, what she wanted to do as a barber. And I asked her, how could she contribute to now start barber shop? And she was a little reserved. And um, she just began to talk to me. And I knew, I knew right from the start that this is gonna be a long lasting relationship. Because what I do is, I don't hire skill. I don't hire talent. I hire attitude. I teach the skill. I need the attitude. And that is why Toya has been with me. That's why Canard has been with me from day one. It's been 18 years. Um, skill is something that I can teach. Attitude is everything. I've seen people come in with the right attitude. They know anything about Barbara. But they come in with the right attitude. I'm going to be the best that I've seen. The biggest money makers. Biggest clientele. So attitude is key. And getting back to the tour you're talking about. Her attitude is just, she's so down to earth and she came in and fell in line with the system and I almost see her as like the, 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 the big mother <laughs> pretty much of all my guys and oftentimes when I leave to go home I say make sure you watch the guys and I'm leaving you in charge and um, she, she's just a sweet mother. She's just a sweetheart, and it was just amazing to see her clientele grow from one to five to ten to now it's it's, it's standing on the forefront. I mean, I sit back and it just makes me smile. It, it really does. It makes me smile. She's my heart. She's my sweetheart, and I tell her almost every day, bless your heart. I smile all the time. That's my baby. <laughs> Now Style Barber Shop on community and giving back. What we've done at Now Style Barber Shop is we do conversation parties. And conversation parties consist of gentlemen getting together on a platform in where we're able to express our differences, we share likenesses, and we just share experiences, period. We're now going through a series called The 33. And what I try to do is I bring resources, not so much to follow now, but to bring resources to maybe have you think a little different in some aspects. And the goal is to become better fathers, better husbands, better sons. Future endeavor for Now Style Barbershop for myself, Chanel Shakur. I have a vision. I have something that I've been toying in my mind for, for about six months now. And it's began to create some type of form. But moving forward, what I've come up with is, it's a nonprofit organization. And the organization is called Hair With The Heart. And what Hair With The Heart does is, it combines or brings together barbers and beauticians, and it links them with people who are in assisted living rooms and bringing them together. Because at one time, people that are in these homes that are mobile now enjoy the barbershop. So if I can bring that together, sort of build a bridge to build relationships, I'm just amazed at what stories will come out of this bond. And I believe that this would be my gift back to the hair industry, which has been so good to me.